But first, the governor's race is on overdrive as Democrats and Republicans cast votes. Today, we talked to one of the Democrats in the race, Philip Levine. Levine is the former mayor of Miami Beach, and in his campaign, he has been stressing issues including gun control, climate change, and taking on Donald Trump. Mr. Levine, thank you for coming in. Thank you, Jim. So let's let's sort of get a sense of things. Where do you see the race right now? I think it's very competitive. We have five people in the race, but I think what people are looking for is someone that's actually done things, someone that's combined private sector experience with public sector experience. Because the one thing we know, Jim, is no one wants someone to go from private right to the big job. Because we have a president right now, unfortunately, who did that and hasn't worked out so well. So that sounds like a dig at uh, Jeff Green. Yeah, I guess you could say that could be that. No question about it. And other candidates as well. So Jeff Green, though, it seems like that his entry in the race coincides with you falling in the polls. As a matter of fact, you were at one time the front runner in the race or the leader in the race. He came in and pretty much cut your vote, you know, by a large substantial margin. And if you add your vote and his vote, you'd be winning. Well, Jim, you know what? Based on what's going on right now, it looks like we're back at the top, okay? But that doesn't make a difference. I think why I'm saying this, Jim, is this. People don't want someone to say they're something that they're not. And I know you ran a little thing here with him the other day. And my God, when you showed him saying that he's going to attack Donald Trump, and of course what you showed was him passing the great Poupon across the table at his country club, you know, Mar-a-Lago, which we call Kremlin on the Sea, which he still belongs to, that's wrong. I was out there fighting for Hillary Clinton for a year and a half. I fought Donald Trump. I know I can continue to fight Donald Trump. And this race has really become about, are we going to allow Donald Trump and his little mini-me, you know, you know, uh, radical Ron, to take over our state? Or are we going to have someone on the field who knows how to fight Donald, who's fought Donald, and I'm that guy. This politician never told us the truth, and the millions he's spending on TV ads can never hide what he said. I know Donald Trump. He's a great guy. A great guy, Mr. Green? Really? After Trump insulted war heroes as cowards, mocked the disabled, and harassed women in his way? I know Donald Trump. He's a great guy. Instead of taking Trump on, Jeff Green embraced him, and that makes Trump and Green one and the same. So do you see this race as purely a referendum on Donald Trump? Well, it's not just about Donald Trump. It's about which direction does Florida want to go? Do we want to go forward or do we want to go backwards? Now, when I mean Donald Trump, I mean Donald Trump saying that he's going to have offshore drilling. I mean Donald Trump saying that he doesn't want to insure people with health care. I mean Donald Trump saying that he doesn't believe, of course, in climate change and sea level rise, which we've experienced. So when I mean Donald Trump, I mean all the things that will affect Florida. This is the last line of defense for Florida to to stop Donald Trump. So uh, obviously, you know, you're going to be taking some shots at, at Jeff Green. You've got a new ad that's going to come out highlighting the fact that he called Donald Trump a great, a great guy. He's also taken some shots at you. There's a recent ad that he's just started running talking about the pump stations that were created under your watch at Miami Beach. This is Philip Levine. This is a latrine. A report from the National Oceanic Administration and the U accused Philip Levine of turning Biscayne Bay into a cesspool with millions of gallons of human waste pouring into it every year from the faulty pump system Levine rushed to install to protect his own Miami property. So what's Levine doing about it? Screaming at the scientists. A bullying egoist to attack scientists and the press? Sound familiar? We don't want waste in Biscayne Bay. We don't want Levine in Tallahassee. His argument is that you rushed the pump stations through. Miami Herald did some reporting, suggested that may be accurate, and in rushing those pump stations through, you made some mistakes. Did Jim, you? I, I could tell you this. The bottom line is it's easy to run and attack someone's record when you actually don't have one. You've never been in public service. I inherited a city that was going underwater. Now, did we do everything right? No. Did we learn as we went along? Absolutely. So what 100%. did you do wrong? But tell let me, me what tell you, you did what wrong. we wish we had done literally is put generators on faster. But let me tell you what we did do. We raised our roads, put in pumps raised our seawalls. We took a city that was going underwater and literally I, I was able to win the most prestigious award and honor from the president of France, which was the officer in the Legion of Honor for my work on climate change. The Urban Land Institute came in afterwards and did an entire review of the process under, under the new Mayor Gelber, and they said what we did was brave and courageous. I am proud of what we did. The Rockefeller Institute, the Rockefeller Foundation stood behind us, and my God, the people of Miami Beach are a lot drier today. And, and I can tell you this, there's no question 
question that we became an international model. How do you argue, or what, how do you make the case against those who would say that that those pump stations you put in the streets that are drier now, the question. sidewalks that wait, wait, wait the yeah. sidewalks that are that are higher benefited property you own well, and your contributors own? Jim, you know that's politics. I wish I owned the entire city of Miami Beach, but I don't. I own a small little section. And but did it not benefit and, from? And I think the entire western part of the city benefited. In fact, that I own a little property in there. It makes sense. But I, I think what's most important is this to understand. For 100 years, the way that irrigation and drainage system in Miami Beach worked is it rained on our streets and the water went out of our seawalls unfiltered. For 100 years, after I became mayor, we put in filtration and vortex filtration systems to clean the water. And by the way, it's never been filtered before. We were the first to ever do it after 100 years. Now, can we do it better? Can we always improve? Absolutely. So let's, let's turn the attention to, to guns. You're wearing an orange ribbon for the, those that died at Parkland. Yes. You have two commercials that are running featuring parents of, of uh, those who, two of the parents who lost children in, uh, in, in the Parkland shooting. Um, talk to me about guns, but also talk to me about, did you, were you at all concerned that using the parents of, of those victims hmm is almost exploitive. Mm, no, absolutely not. You know, I've met so many of the parents, Jim, and when you look into their eyes and the hurt and the tragedy that, that's affected all of us, and of course, especially them, uh, they came to me and they said to me, Mayor, we've watched what you've done. We saw how you take action. Uh, we want to be there for you. And we've met all the candidates, but we believe that you're somebody that will actually get things done. And I'm honored to have their support. And they came to us and wanted to be in commercials and wanted us to make sure that we put out their opinions. And I'm honored to have it. And I got to tell you something. Uh, I would like to have more folks that want to have action taken uh, on gun control and gun safety measures. So what action do you think realistically can pass if you're governor up in Tallahassee? Well, Jim, I know this. I know what I want to pass. I want to make sure we ban assault rifles. I want to make sure we have better background checks. I want to make sure folks with mental health issues cannot buy weapons in Florida and that we close those gun show loopholes. Now, I'll do everything in my power to push the legislature to get there. And I'm a pretty persuasive guy, and I'm a guy that uh, uh, definitely gets things done, as you know. But if we can't push them in that direction, I will take it to the people of Florida via a ballot referendum. And I will ask the people of Florida, would you like to see these measures taken? And I believe they will say yes. The other thing we're going to do, Jim, is we're going to take the power of Tallahassee and bring it back to the local mayors and the commissioners. Because as you know, even though in Miami Beach we passed a, a assault rifle ban, it's not effective because the governor preempts it. The legislature preempts all these things having to do with gun safety. I want to give that power and authority back to the local governments. The, uh, the, the issue issue of preemption is, is a big one. Do you think you can actually, though, get that passed through Tallahassee? Tallahassee likes to have that control. Listen, I can tell you this, Jim. Uh, when I became mayor, someone, everyone said there's no way you're going to be able to raise the streets and do what you did. We did it. Everyone said you're never going to get an ordinance passed to raise the minimum living wage, and we did it. And I remember, and I know you know this, everyone said, how are you going to reform that police department? My God, the tail's wagging the dog. I got in there, and we reformed that police department. We changed the chief. We changed the deputy chief. We put cameras on our police before Ferguson. There's a lot of things you can do when you're very persuasive and you want to get things done. I want to go back on environmental issues for a second. You talk about runoff and, and the, the need to protect the Everglades. That's one of the things that you talk a lot about. The One of the issues that has come up in this campaign is the Mega Mall project in Northwest Dade. It's on, it would be built on land that's partially owned by the Graham family. Gwen Graham has come under some criticism. Do you fault Gwen Graham for that? And wh hmm. where do you stand on that mall? You know, where I, I don't like to make something political. I mean, this is something that I have come out against way before this election. So nothing to do with and Gwen. Why are you and, nothing, to it? and I'll tell you why. Number one, I don't believe that creating a 21st century economy means having a massive mall. Uh, I don't think parents grow up and say they want their kids, they're dying to go work for $8.25 at the mall. Number two, we have major transportation traffic issues in South Florida all across the state. Why would we want to create a bigger problem of a problem we already have without solutions? How are we going to create all this massive traffic up there? People are sick of it. So those are my two big issues with it. And those are not anything having to do with this campaign. Those are things I have brought out way before this election. So let's also talk about the, you referenced the, the, the story that I did yesterday. We're taping this on Friday. I did a story posted online about how 
Now, a five-year-old police report has now surfaced that suggests that it was a file by a cocktail waitress who used to work at one of Jeff Green's hotels in Palm Beach, claimed that Jeff Green smacked her on the arm to get her attention to turn the music down. Mm -hmm. She did not press any charges. She didn't want to prosecute. She said she wasn't injured. She also said she didn't think Green intended to hurt her. But what's your take on that? I think that Jeff Green has to answer those questions. Uh, I know that uh, I was fighting for hotel workers to get them higher wages. Uh, he, of course, has to answer that question. Florida now, the group that represents National Organization for Women, uh, do you think they're calling on him to step out of the race? Yeah, Are you yeah. calling for that as well? Well, you know what I think? I think everyone has to live on their record. Uh, and as you can imagine, uh, any type of harassment of anybody, a woman, uh, is a terrible, horrible thing. Uh, and I think that uh, Mr. Green uh, needs to answer these allegations. Uh, I don't know enough about it, Jim, okay. uh, but I think that uh, it's up to him to stand for his own record. So let's talk about your record for a second on, on some financial issues. I think in going through your, your financial disclosure forms, I saw that you have some, some accounts in the Cayman Islands. Is that correct? No, not me. Not you. Nothing no, in the never. Cayman Islands. <laughs> if, they, if you know about some of them, please let me know. I'd like to get that money. <laughs> but I know I never have. Never have. No, no. Never. My mistake. I'll go. No, more. never have, Jim. All no, right. Not me. So let's talk about health care for a second. Yeah. Where do, you, where do you do in terms of, would you first, would you accept Medicaid into, yes. into Florida? And how do you insure people here in, in Florida? Jim, the fact that this governor turned his back on Floridians, on patients, on hospitals, and didn't accept Medicaid is horrible expansion money. If I'm governor, we will accept this money. We will demand more. By the way, we want to insure these 1.6 million people in Florida. And by the way, when you look at the budget, we save a half a billion dollars a year by accepting this funding. And I know we need to take that money and we need to pay teachers more and we need to do it right away. So is it a, so also the question of minimum wage. How do you get a minimum wage passed in the state? You want to take the minimum wage to where? To 15? Listen, I believe it could be 13, it could be 14, it could be 15. But Jim, let's recall in 2004, the people of Florida voted on a ballot referendum. Specifically, they said that we want local communities to be able to set their own minimum living wage. Unfortunately, the Kremlin, I mean Tallahassee, decided they don't want to listen to the people. And so I believe we should listen to the people and let local communities set their own minimum living wage. And let me tell you why. Because what it costs to buy a hamburger in Miami Beach is a little different than what it costs to buy a hamburger in Pensacola. There seems to be a lot of Kremlins in Florida suddenly. Did you say that <laughs> Mar-a-Lago was Kremlin? Kremlin by the sea. Kremlin no by question the sea about and it. Tallahassee no is question, Kremlin. Because let me tell you why. Thomas Jefferson said government works best closest to the people. But unfortunately, these folks in Tallahassee seem to believe that's not the case. They want to preempt all the local mayors and commissioners, make their own rules. They want to set their own standards out of Tallahassee. And that reminds me of the old central uh, planning system of the Soviet Union. And it didn't work out too well for them. So I think we need to go back to how we do things and let local communities uh, make their own laws and regulations. This campaign has turned pretty negative and pretty nasty in its final weeks. Uh, is that just the nature of things? Do you regret that you're going negative at this point? Well, listen, all we can do basically is resign. I mean, I'm sorry to respond to. Oh, did you uh, want to resign? No, no, no. I don't have an office to resign at this point, but I'm running for one. But we have to basically respond to negative attacks. We have not done so to this point. We've been very, very positive. Uh, but on Unfortunately, when Mr. Green sees, I guess, that we're doing so well, that he wants to go after my record, which I am very proud of, uh, in uh, making sure that our city is dry, uh, we need to respond in kind, and that's what we plan to do. So climate change, obviously, a major issue. We yes. talked about it a little bit. What can the state of Florida, though, realistically do when it comes to issues related to, uh, related to climate change? Well, the first thing rise. we need to do, Jim, is we need to admit that we have a problem, that climate change and sea level rise is here to stay. So I believe we need a chief environmental resiliency officer out of Tallahassee. We need regional environmental resiliency officers. We need to make sure we have a resiliency fund to help communities that need to create a level of resiliency, whether it's raising their roads or, for example, in Jacksonville, making sure the St. John's River does not overflow. Because, you know, this whole climate change, warming of the planet, this is not, you know, something that's going away. And 80% of our entire state is at risk, as you know. Uh, these once in a hundred year hurricanes are unfortunately going to be once a year, and we better be prepared for it. You recently raised the idea of creating a, a TSA essentially for schools. Yes. How would that work? Well, we need that. We have a TSA after 9-11 for our airports. Uh, based on what's happened at Pulse and the horrible Stoneman Douglas shootings, we need an ESA, an Education Security Administration, to formalize the security and hardening of our schools. But the funding for this should not have anything to do with our education budget. So where does we the funding come from? Oh, we have many, many ways. We just talked about a half a billion dollars coming in right now from uh, Medicaid expansion. We need to make sure the 5.5% corporate 
corporate income tax that a lot of companies in Florida evade by pushing it off our state, away from our state, into low tax states. We need to make sure that we have a, uh, a combined earnings reporting system. We need to make sure we stop giving away corporate incentives. We need to make sure we start giving away corporate tax loopholes. We don't need them. We're a low tax state. But Jim, we can do all these things and more without raising taxes. We have an $89 billion a year budget. It goes up about $2 billion a year. And I can go on and on where we're going to raise the funds. Well, unfortunately, that's about the time that we have. But we'll continue this conversation uh, at another time. And if you're the nominee, obviously, we'll have you back more often. I look forward to being all here. Right. Thank you very much. All right, up next, Donna Shalala. And later, a special programming note on the algae crisis. That's coming up.